Hello, Bernard. What Hi, will we do in this video? Yeah, we will now create some volumes, right? Um, and first we start maybe with the non-expected thing. We will create a local volume. That means one that is not stretched um, because just to show that this is still possible on a stretched uh, HCI cluster. Um, because what would we can. You, would we use it? Yeah, what maybe, you case? know, you have some local resources, uh, virtual machines sitting on um, that don't need to be geo redundant in that kind of way. So, you know, you can still use um, a local volume for that. There are right. some applications, of course, who have replication built in, right? Like, for example, right. domain controllers, you don't have to replica dom replicate the domain yeah. controller. You have multiple of them. They have the same information. Databases, yeah. maybe yeah. SQL has an always on cluster and Exchange are some Microsoft examples where you yeah. have built in replication or redundancy in the application. So you don't have to do it on the VM, right? Yeah, and we talked about it. It might be the better choice, right? Um, yeah. Because it's, um, it's application specific, it's tuned for that application, right? And it's not, uh, and the application is aware of its form of redundancy. So I think it makes sense to have, you know, some sort of mixed use and be cautious about um, to, you know, with, to decide which solution is the best. Mm -hmm. So we create a local one and then we, um, and we also keep it as a reference, right? Because we want to do performance testing mm -hmm. later um, mm -hmm. and sort of get the differences between the local one and the stretched one. Um, and then uh, you are going to create a stretched volume um, using Windows Admin Center. Um, and we show how that's done because there are some more steps involved, some more questions that need to be answered. And if you look at the creation process, there are m m more things happening. But I think it's it's a bit more complex, right? Yeah, let's, let's do it, right? So switch over um, to your screen because you are the master of ceremony now. Um, okay, and uh, later we will also look a bit at, at the networking, right? So um, this is yeah. a jam-packed session. So here I'm uh, in, uh, in uh, Windows Admin Center and now uh, it recognizes uh, the HCI cluster uh, because here you see we have volumes and drives. And I had to deinstall uh, Windows Admin Center and reboot the system and then install it again. And now it really recognized the cluster. Just uh, here you see our two pools. Yeah. Uh, and we mentioned this is the only supported way to have more than one pool stretch cluster. Yeah. Um, but now we want to create volumes. And for that, we go to the volumes um, area or screen. And here you see, we have already seen our, our four cluster performance history volumes. Mm -hmm. But first, we wanted to create a, a local one. volume that is only presented on one side, so on a single mm -hmm. side. And you see here, the, the volume creation is a little bit uh, different than we have it in a non-stretch cluster. We can choose between create in a single side and replicate across two sides. We will do that later. Now we want mm -hmm. to create a volume in one side. And let's choose the odd side. And we just name it no, no, non-stretched. Mm -hmm. One. It's a very, very a, a good name, I think. Mm -hmm. And let's do 500 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. And it will create a, a ReFS volume. We have more options. We don't play with uh, integrity checksums. We don't encrypt it. It's just fixed and we will just create it. Mm -hmm. uh, so what were the um, resiliency options, right? So we've seen that was a two-way mirror, right? Um, uh, true. I, I didn't look at that. You Exactly. So we have three choices here. Yep. Uh, they are the same as in a two-node cluster and we will just look into them again. Mm -hmm. yeah, I forgot that. So just last... Just, let's just pretend we will do another single uh, single mm -hmm. side volume and if we go here we have the resiliency is a two-way mirror it's just two mm -hmm. copies of the extent right. and uh, like we have in a, a two node cluster mm -hmm. um then we have a nested two-way mirror that's uh, that's mm -hmm. basically a four-way mirror you have in mm -hmm. In, mm -hmm. uh, in each uh, node of the two nodes of one side uh, the pool has only two nodes 
Yeah, we mm -hmm. have a four node stretch cluster, two inside one, two inside two. So mm -hmm. we have two copies of the data in every node. That's mm -hmm. the nested two-way mirror. And then we have also the nested mirror accelerated parity. That's a combination mm -hmm. of a of a um, nested two-way mirror, so a four-way mirror, and mm -hmm. also a rate five plus one. But mm -hmm. um, these are more resilient, mm -hmm. but you also have less, you get less uh, usable space out of your extents that you have. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, all the thing that you're configuring just happens on one side, and you only have two nodes on this side, so um, it, and then therefore you have only the resiliency options of a two node system, I would say, right? Exactly. And uh, yeah. we, we go with a two way mirror because when we create um, stretched volume, uh, let's, uh -huh. let's go here, uh -huh. we have the same choice, but right. now we have two copies in one side and then again two copies in the other side. So we have four copies. Right. Mm -hmm. If we would go with the four-way mirror, we would have eight copies. And for a lot of customers, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a bit too much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and we want to we want to do a performance comparison. So it would wouldn't be really fair to compare a mm. four-way mirror with a single side volume to a uh, to the other uh, volume, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to okay, see what it. is uh, what is the replication, uh, what's the impact of the replication. Mm -hmm. But now okay. let's create. Um, a replicated volume, so a stretched volume. Mm -hmm. And first we have to choose from where to where. And we also go to from the odd side. So it will be created in the odd side and the mm -hmm. replica will be in the even side. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We can switch sides and we will do that later in the series. But in the moment, the volume mm -hmm. lives in the odd side and the redundancy is on the even side. Mm -hmm. And we can choose between the replication mode. So we talked about the different replication yeah. modes in the intro. We have mm -hmm. a synchronous replication. We want that. So every data that is written on one side is synchronously replicated to the other side. And when it's mm -hmm. there on a device, then it's acknowledged and our application can be sure that the data is in two sides. Yeah? Get it. Asynchronous yep. is if we have really long distances and um, mm -hmm. Let's say yeah. 500 kilometers, and the latency of the network would add a lot of uh, a lot of latency. So we could or do... if you have some sort of a, a flaky network, you know, where you net not all, every packet is uh, you know successfully transmitted right now. Um, True. I think yeah. So uh, be... we also have a have a have the lock is used as a buffer, for example. Mm. So if the network um, is flaky, how you say it, or can't can't give us the um, the performance we need for yeah. our rights. So let's call this mm -hmm. like one of the node because we later yeah. want to use VM fleet. Um, mm -hmm. And we did we did a, a long I think two videos in the in the uh, single uh, single side series. Let's say it, say it. So if you're interested in VM fleet, look there. We will use it later, but we will not explain yeah. it in this series. Yeah? So this is the name. Mm -hmm. I will do a one terabyte volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will not go here. We have all the also the options. We can uh, we can um, choose to use integrity checksums for the data. We can encrypt the volumes. That's nice. Um, uh, mm -hmm. When I started with stretch cluster in the first version, you had to, you had to encrypt the volumes by hand. It was not possible mm -hmm. with Windows Admin okay. Center. At least stretch volumes. Mm -hmm. Stretch volumes in the moment are always fixed, so no 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 thin provisioning. Mm -hmm. And we have here an advanced uh, tab. Or an advanced area, and here we we can specify the uh, storage replica group names. We go with mm -hmm. the defaults, yeah. and we can specify how large the lock volume is uh, because we have a lock volume, and mm -hmm. we could encrypt the traffic so mm -hmm. that uh, the replication data is encrypted. You should do that, of course, if you leave your network side. So if you go over some kind of public network should encrypt the traffic, um, but here we we will not do that. And we can also enable consistency groups. We will not mm -hmm. do that okay. either. So let's just create the volume and mm -hmm. maybe he will ask me for. 
Yeah, you you have um, increased the size for the log volume. So what was the intention for this one, right? So you're not going with the 40 gigabyte default, you raised it up to 100 gigabyte. What was yeah. your intention on this? Yeah, I've um, so for example, if if we would have a network problem, the log mm -hmm. file is used to buffer the data, also with a synchronous yeah. re replication. Um, and if the network comes back in that time, uh, so the log file is not full, the 100 gigabyte are not written to the log file, or it's a bit less, um, it can, the, the synchronization can, uh, can synchronize the missing data and uh, go back to, to, to the synchron synchronous state. If the log file um, flows over, mm. yeah, so if, if it's not enough space there and uh, the, the time, let's say the, the interruption is too long, the, the synchronization has to start from the first byte to the last byte of the volume. So give it a bit, if you give it a bit more space, you can endure a longer outage, for okay. example. And um, I, I heard somewhere that 10% maybe not a, a not too bad log file size. But of course, if you do 10 terabyte volumes, you won't go with a terabyte log file. Uh, that's mm -hmm. maybe too much, yeah. But here I I use roughly 100, 200 gigabytes, depending on the size of the volume. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we see, yeah, this was our first volume where the data lives. We have on mm -hmm. the same host, so it's living on host three. On the mm -hmm. uh, on the same host or on the same site, we have our lock volume, the 100 gigabyte. Mm -hmm. And then we have two more volumes. We have the mm -hmm. replica volume. It has the same size than the original volume, but you don't see mm -hmm. it because it's not mounted. It's yeah. offline. We can't use it, but it, mm -hmm. the data will be replicated there. But let's uh, just switch to your screen because we want to see something, Bernard. Huh? Yeah, uh, the uh, the question would be, you know, now we have a stretched volume um, and we are writing data to it. Um, which networks will be chosen for the replication traffic? Uh, that would be... Uh, maybe interesting question to, uh, yeah, to watch so, out for. So uh, let's have a look. We, we were too slow, Bernard. So we, we uh, create no another I one, mean, right? Yeah, <laughs> create another volume. Um, so switch to your screen. Um, we create and, another um, one because the terabyte, uh, maybe uh, let's do a larger one. Uh, so we have a bit more time. I do another one. This time and uh, it's interesting to see, right? So the uh, when you are creating and um, I let you create um, and maybe talk a little bit uh, over it. I mean, if you create that volume, um, all the zeros uh, that are in an empty volume, right, need also to be replicated. And that takes some time. So you would see network traffic uh, right after the time of creation of that uh, of that uh, replicated volume of that stretched volume, and that is basically what we are doing, right? So we are creating that volume and then have a look at the network adapter of the individual host, yeah, um, and see where the traffic is flowing. So, so if we would uh, choose the compression, yes, mm -hmm. uh, no, there there is also a compression option that should be on by default in twenty. 2H2. I'm not sure, but I think so. Um, uh, the, the the data is compressed a bit, but uh, so mm. it's maybe not a whole terabyte or now the two terabytes. But we will, but we will see a lot of traffic. So mm -hmm. let's look here when the first volume arrives. When we have all four volumes, then a partnership is created so that the storage replica. Uh, uh, that it knows this volume is replicated to this volume and these are the log volumes. Is something happening here? Yeah, it's creating the volume, the first one. Um, and when the partnership is there, the replication starts. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So in the moment, we, uh, we are just at the stage where the first volume is created. Yeah. Then we have to choose the right host because we have four nodes. So mm -hmm. the chances are 50-50 that we are not getting the data on the on the first node where our uh, task manager is running. Yeah? So I will prepare on the third node also a task manager. Oh, there it is. Nice. <laughs> there it is. We have a task mm -hmm. manager here. Okay, let's go back. 
is he still he is still preparing the two terabyte volume so now we have it there it is mm -hmm. there is our log file and mm -hmm. now it's creating the replica volume because i chose two terabytes it takes a bit longer to mm -hmm. format it and so on so we have a we... bit more time yeah, can we have a look which node it will choose to place this? Uh, so it's the uh, node so number the two. Second one is the source. Right. So mm -hmm. I could also open the task manager. Mm -hmm. On the second one, at least we have we have our source node. And when the replication starts, we should see a lot of stuff on the send now. Okay. Yeah, so the there we are. So it's on the first one. That's good. So now the replication is starting. He has a partnership. Let's go to the first one. We should see a lot of data here. See here, 21, 10 gigabit, 16 gigabit, 9 gigabit, 6 gigabit. It's mm -hmm. using multiple network oh. adapters, right? Yeah, so but it's using the replication ones and the cluster networks, right? Because these are over the two sides. So let's mm -hmm. just uh, say that's the second one. Let's just uh, set the constraints, yeah? Or um, uh, we will talk about that later so that we maybe see direction is even. So there will be an error, but now you see we only mm -hmm. use the replication networks now. So the cluster network is went down from, let's say 10 gigabyte, 12, 15 gigabyte down okay. to, to a bit. And now mm -hmm. only the replication networks are used. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was our intent, right? So that is, yeah, basically, you know, we are shaping the traffic flow here. Where is the replication traffic uh, going, right? So we remember we have these four adapters. Uh, they are all routed between the two sites. So potentially they could be used. And that's what, you know, happens without any setting. But um, we want to, you know, shape the traffic to use only the replica adapters. And that's what Carsten has in its uh, in his PowerShell script to set the uh, replica constraints. Yeah. Basically, what command is it? Um, it? There is a one liner, right, usually, but you need to, you know, um, do you have a, a code sample for this? Yeah, I have. Let me see. Set. We can look into the script. It's uh, we have mm -hmm. we have seen so many scripts in this, uh, mm -hmm. this series, yep. right? <laughs> so. Um, so I, I open this a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the important part is this line here. Okay. So we use the set storage yes. replica network constraint. Mm -hmm. We give him the source replication group name. Mm -hmm. We have it in a variable, uh, and we said use those cluster ne uh, uh, cluster network. So you remember in the last, or oh, our viewers maybe remember in the last video, yeah. we renamed our cluster networks. Mm -hmm. We renamed them from cluster network seven, for example, to REPL 1.0. This may be not the best name, but it, it is, um, yeah. O is in, in the odd side. And yeah. uh, we have one of those, uh, two of those replication adapters. So we say mm -hmm. this, the, it's from odd, so the replication is from odd to even. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, in our case, we use this one. It was uh, the second uh, second volume. It it uh, was created in even to odd, uh -huh. and we said then we we say the cluster. These are the source networks. It's on the even side. These two are used on the even sides with this uh, uh, resource group. Uh -huh. um, and the destination is, is the destination group, and then we use the destination mm -hmm. interfaces. These are the cluster networks. That's important. It's not the interface cards on the on yeah. the host. Yeah. Okay. And interesting it is because you need to do it per stretched volume you create, right? So this is not exactly. something you use, you do only once. You do it with every volume, with every stretched volume that you create, right? Yeah. And um, Windows Admin Center doesn't do it for you because mm. it doesn't know which network cards to, to take, right? right? Because we have to specify the cluster networks mm -hmm. that I use. So you remember, mm -hmm. um, not you, our viewers remember, mm -hmm. these are the network, the cluster network names and we want to use our yeah. replication networks, right? They, mm -hmm. they are specially built for that. 
and we don't we don't want to use management or anything else these are just our replication adapters mm -hmm. and it's it's working it's um, so okay. many people forget that that they mm -hmm. have to do that and uh, maybe then the traffic goes even over the management network depends how SMB3, mm -hmm. uh, repli the replication traffic is SMB3 traffic. SMB3 mm -hmm. has its own ways to find the, the, the way to the other side. And in our example, it chooses four adapters because they are equally fast. They're all 25 gigabit adapters. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes all of them. If the management would also be a 25 gigabit adapter, it would it would uh, also take the management. So we would uh, mm -hmm. have the traffic over five networks and we don't want that. Uh, or maybe we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bernard. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for um, for the uh, constraints. Yeah, I, have, I have one more thing. Uh, one more thing. Yeah. Have maybe another more, uh, another thing? No, that's good. I mean, uh, the partnerships uh, and the groups, I think, would be interesting to see for the people. So there is, no, you we'll know, we, you, we, you, you talked about the groups when using or setting the network constraints, right? Um, and um, the groups are, 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 is one concept here. Of, and you have to, with every volume that you do stretched, you have two, two groups, right? A source and a destination. So and you exactly. see, could see it from the name, the source group name um, is yeah. dash group. Um, and the other one is dash replica dash group, right? If we don't change the names in admin that's, center. Uh, yes, that's, that's uh, different. Yeah, and here we see we have in our for our volume uh, second volume we did mm -hmm. it's still replicating its initial block copy and we see here mm -hmm. we have a little bit of information in Windows Admin Center it's uh, it's it's a bit lacking maybe it's mm -hmm. not updating um, all the time oh, if we do a reload maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you see here, it says it's at 1.11 terabyte of 1.83 terabyte uh, are copied. Mm -hmm. Now it jumps to 1.39. So we have a little bit of feedback uh, of mm -hmm. what's happening with the replication here. If, is it synchronous? Um, uh, yeah. we, we can have more information. We can switch direction. And we will do that later. But here, at least, we have a little yeah. bit of information. So basically, you know, when when you created that stretched volume using Windows Admin Center, um, a couple of things happen, right? So the first thing is there will be a cluster shared volume be created, you know, the original volume. Mm -hmm. Then you will create a cluster shared volume, which is the log file on the source, right? Yeah, this and, is not a cluster shared volume. It's a cluster volume, but... Yeah, I... I um, Near least, enough. You know, that, yeah, I, I th no, no, yeah, not quite sure. I think I saw, I saw it in the um, admin center. But anyways, and then you have two other um, two other disks or sort of volumes that will be created uh, on the other side, and then there will be a partnership implemented, uh, and with that partnership, it will be some uh, or it will be uh, it will also create the groups. Uh, and you are right. Each, it's also a side. cluster shared volume. Yeah. But we shouldn't use that for data, right? No. We could no, use no. it. It's mounted. No, no. Um, so th yeah. this is the first volume. Then we have our lock. And then we have the replica volume and the replica lock. And if we switch okay. directions, this volume okay. would be the source volume and this would be the destination volume, right? And the lock mm -hmm. files are used. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we could, um, what are we doing next? I mean, do you want to? create also this using PowerShell? Um, we can or... do a volume with PowerShell if you want to. Uh, maybe it's a bit clearer the, how the yeah. process works. Yeah. Uh, we can do that. Um, we have yeah, PowerShell yeah. And it, for that. It, to be clear, um, Windows Admin Center would be my preferred choice of creating that volumes. Um, it does a lot for you, but we, you know, you uh, and we also together, and I had also experienced sometimes you have problems in trying this out. And uh, maybe for understanding what happens, sometimes um, have it in code in PowerShell is useful. So that's maybe uh, why we have a look. And from that, you could see it's not so much fun to do it with PowerShell, right? So I don't know which was which one is better to explain. Um, 
I would go for the for the left hand side, but for the left. Yeah, one. No, no. this is this is basically the same as yeah. the left one. So this is more automated. It will ask for the volume and the direction and to do all the rest. So let's mm. have a look here at this one. Mm -hmm. I I go. I increase the font a bit. Yeah, that's perfect. yeah that we can see it better. So uh, first, there are some variables, of course. Um, mm -hmm. This is a volume name that you yep. create. You have to know that, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, as you mentioned, we create mm -hmm. this volume. Correct. In this example has a terabyte. It has mm -hmm. VFS mm -hmm. with the volume name. And we have to specify the pool. We have two pools here. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Got it's it. uh, in this side. Uh, in this uh, this example, it's uh, the the volume with the three. So it's on the oh. odd side. Mm -hmm. Then we create also the log volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The name is the volume name minus log. So we just okay. concatenate here. It's also ReFS and it's one hundred gig. Yeah? Okay. So then we do a little trick uh, because mm -hmm. um, in a storage basis direct cluster or Azure Stack HCI cluster, you have a, a cluster group called available storage. And where this available storage is online, there you can do storage things. Yeah. In a non stretch cluster, it's always there online where the, the, where the action is, right? Because we don't mm -hmm. have two pools or two sites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but in a stretch cluster, it, it can be inside a site odd or side even mm -hmm. and it's it's online on one of the nodes so um assuming when we do that here it's it's mm -hmm. online in uh, node three or node one mm -hmm. so if now we have to create the volumes on the other side so we mm -hmm. move so we stop this group mm -hmm. and we move the group to a node on the other side mm -hmm. uh, and we could also do a start cluster group uh, to bring it online. Yeah? So mm -hmm. let's say this is to be complete. This is missing here. Yeah? So we bring it online. Mm -hmm. Now we can create the replica volume Correct. in the other pool, in the even pool. This mm -hmm. was in the odd pool. Now we do a, a, this, a same size volume that then our original volume. This is a mm -hmm. data yep. copy volume, right? Mm -hmm. Same size, same file system. We have the name minus replica, and it's in the other pool. And we do mm -hmm. the same with the lock volume. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, then we have to do something on the odd side. So we move again our uh, available storage group to one node in the odd side. That's our. Yep. Here it's it's coded. It's a node one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is just showing the resources. It's 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 not necessary. Just uh, some output. And then um, in this example, we add our 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 volume that we created with the volume name. We make a cluster shared volume out of it with the mm -hmm. commanded add cluster shared volume, mm -hmm. uh, and then. Yeah. So now, before that, it was just a cluster volume. Only mm -hmm. one node is owner, and only the, this node can do something with the volume. And when we bring it up to a cluster shared volume, every node in the cluster basically can use it. Um, mm -hmm. Or VMs on every node can use it. And we will that, we'll see that later. So now we get some passes, yeah? the, the paths for the replica volume. Yeah? We have mm -hmm. to have the name of the replica volume. Mm -hmm. Because for the partnership, we need the volume name. Mm -hmm. Then we move again all the stuff to the other side. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then we get the two passes of the two volumes on the other side. That's the replica volume and the replica yep. lock. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we create our partnership. Yeah? Um, we say this is our source computer name. One, one name, one computer in the odd side. Right. This is our source side. There are the there are the mm -hmm. volumes that are the source volumes, mm -hmm. and uh, we create here uh, also with this um, command that we also create the uh, storage replica groups. Yeah, yeah. And we use also here the volume name minus group for the mm -hmm. source replica group in the odd side, mm 
-hmm. And uh, this is our name of our cluster shared volume. Mm -hmm. And then we have to specify the log volume name so that that the replication knows, okay, this is the log volume. There, there I put my uh, log mm -hmm. information. And then we have to give it a destination computer, one computer of the even side. And mm -hmm. there we specify the name of the storage replica, uh, the, stor the storage replica group. And the name yeah. is volume name minus replica group. And then we give it the path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the lock. Yeah. And then the partnership okay. is created. The yeah. Do you want to see it in action? Yes, please. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah, but let right? me. Yeah, but let me choose the other one. So the other one is uh, a, a bit nicer. Mm -hmm. or, or do you want to go step by step through this thing? No, I. I mean, you you explained it. Um, so let's let's run it. We don't have to do it again, right? So create stretched volume two. It will ask for the volume name. So we have still the three to do and the four. And the three is living in the odd side. So that should do the trick. Yeah, it will create the volumes. It's very fast, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's a bit faster than admin center. But admin, okay. admin say, center does it very safely. You see here, these are the other two volumes. Uh -huh. And it's so nice to create volumes with ReFS. So ReFS is so fast with the formatting. So here's the uh, partnership. Mm -hmm. And now we should see very soon some traffic. Mm -hmm. And it should use, again, our, uh, you know, uh, probably our four adapters because we don't exactly. have uh, some constraints set up for this volume and we need therefore to do it again right we have to do it again yeah so now everything should be fine we should see uh, data mm -hmm. soon because... can you do me a favor and do um, get sr red um re partnership SR or rep yeah, partnership, please, because I think that's the one where we see the uh, no, that then that's the other one, the group where we see the uh, replication status. Yeah, but there are m many groups, right? Mm, yeah. So initial block copy synchronous. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. but we don't see the the node. It's on the cluster, right? So yeah. I think not this node is used. Let's see mm. the third one. Here yeah, we yeah. here we have it 12, 9, yep. 6, 11, 13. Yeah, no mm -hmm. constraint set, but if I do the constraint here, we have our mm -hmm. set constraint mm -hmm. for volume three. We will get an error. No, mm -hmm. first direction volume three is odd, odd to even. Mm -hmm. So now we should see on the third one nothing on cluster. And we have roughly 20 okay. gigabit on REPL1 and 20 gigabit on REPL2. Yeah. Okay, which is cool. So I think, yeah, that would be it, right? So we, we created, that was the video for creating the, uh, the stretched volumes, right? Um, exactly. There is obviously more to that, right? Um, but I think we'll do that in a later video. Um, when we have so, some data in the volumes this is just yeah. only creating uh, volumes and uh, yeah. initial replication but we want to get real data in there right and do some yes. performance tests right and also Correct. show uh, if something fails of course yeah. yep okay so okay so this video. concludes this video and in the next one we will uh, we will uh, look at uh, some performance data with our io benchmark huh? see you there <laughs>